It has been one week already since I made this huge 10 liter spring ecosphere, so it's time for an update. As I predicted last time, a lot of the Daphnia have died, due to the lack of oxygen, space or an overall unstable system. But that certainly doesn't mean that all the other critters aren't fine. The aquatic isopods, for instance, are doing great. It looks like we are going to have a lot of bladder snail babies, cause you're looking at a lot of batches of eggs. I thought it would be fun to show you a bit of the development process of the eggs. They start out as these tiny black dots. Then they turn white and grow a little. These eggs are about to hatch and if you try you can see the basic shape of a bladder snail. Since there's only about 3 big snails in this ecosphere, there's a big chance some of the batches of eggs came from this snail right here. I also discovered a new species of snail in this ecosphere, which I believe is a Planorbis planorbis, a species of ram's horn snail. identity of this water spider still remains a mystery, but there are babies, and they're pretty cute. Then I suddenly saw a hydra. Those black dots you see in its stomach, those are ostracods. It ate those. I think hydra are pretty cool, and I'm going to tell you why. First of all, they don't die of old age, they actually don't seem to age at all. It has huge tentacles which can be up to 5 cm or 2 inches long. They can have up to 12 tentacles surrounding their mouth. Each tentacle has stinging cells called snedocytes which contain nematocysts. When the nematocysts come in contact with prey, they shoot their contents, consisting of a thread with neurotoxins, into the prey, which can be paralyzed when hundreds of nematocysts are fired. Hydra do not have recognizable brains or true muscles. Instead of a nervous system, it has a very simple nerve net, comparable to jellyfish. Hydra can reproduce both sexually as asexually, but when there's enough food, they almost always reproduce asexually, by a system called budding. It's some sort of cloning. When a hydra has enough food, it can form a bud every two days, which will grow into a mini hydra, which will slowly detach itself from the parent, and then you suddenly have two hydra clones. Hydra are true predators, and it's pretty cool how they eat. First, they wave their tentacles around in the water in the hopes of touching a prey animal. When it does, the nematocyst I talked about earlier fire into the prey. And then the tentacle itself will wrap around the prey. Within half a minute, the other tentacles will have joined in the attack. Within two minutes, the prey animal will have been moved to the mouth. And within ten minutes, it will be fully swallowed. 
After two or three days, it will have been fully digested. Hydra can digest prey up to two times their size because they are able to stretch their body wall. Some Hydra species exist in a mutual relationship with single-celled algae. The algae are protected from predators like Daphnia by the Hydra and in return the Hydra uses the photosynthetic products from the algae as a food source. So, if you don't think Hydra are super cool now, well, sorry, but you're crazy. And it's all living right here on my windowsill. The eight-eyed blood hedgehog finally decided to move while filming. There's another new species in the ecosphere. It's a worm and it has tentacles or spikes sticking out of the sides of its body. And it has a thingy sticking out of its head. It sort of reminds me of an anglerfish. Well, that's the one week update on this huge spring ecosphere. I hope you like the informative side of the video. If you don't want to miss other projects and other updates, well, you're going to have to subscribe. Thanks for watching.